Good morning everyone. Today I am going to talk about an approach to patient with hypertension especially in outpatient department. So what is hypertension? It is defined as off systolic blood pressure more than or equal to 140 mm of mercury and diastolic blood pressure equal to more than or equal to 90 mm of mercury in the office blood pressure measurement. And you should be always treat the hypertension to prevent the complication of hypertension rather than the risk of drug associated with the hypertension. So we have to outweigh the benefits rather to the risk of the treatment. It is one of the important global burden of disease. Why? Because in uh, Nepal around uh, 2008 we found that 50% of total death in Nepal was due, was due to non-communicable disease and among them cardiovascular disease account 25% of the disease death. And what is the important risk factor for cardiovascular disease? Hypertension is one of the major risk factor for cardiovascular diseases and it was found to be 27.8% of adult age more than 25 years of age to be affected in Nepal. According to WHO, Nepal reported the second highest proportion of the hypertension people 27.3 after Afghanistan that is 29%. So you can imagine the burden of hypertension in our country. Let's go with the case and we will discuss gradually so how, what was, how the patient of hypertension present in the opening. So this is a dummy case I have taken from e-medicine. So 62 year old African American woman with pre-diabetes present for her annual physical exam. She has no complaint. The average BP reading taken in two times in her right arm was 143 by 88 millimeter of mercury. Her physical examination is unremarkable except for she has an obesity. She has no history of myocardial infarction, stroke, kidney disease or heart failure. After the visit, she measures her blood pressure at home and returns one month later. The average BP from multiple clinic and home reading is 138 by 86 mm of mercury. Her total cholesterol is 260 mg per deciliter, SDL is 42, LDL is 165 mg per deciliter and she does not, she is not a smoker. So with this, what are the problems you see in this patient? The problem is, she is elderly female, she has a obesity and she has a dyslipidemia. The question is whether she has a hypertension or not. What, what you guys tell? Yes or no? If yes, why she is having hypertension? So for that answer, whether she has hypertension or not, Definitely she is a hypertension. Why? Because you can see her BP in the systolic BP is more than or equal to 140 and diastolic BP is around or equal to 90. So she has definitely hypertension. But what stage of hypertension, what is the classification of hypertension she comes under, we will be discussing in the further slides. So if you see the classification of hypertension of the office blood pressure measurement, you can classify the hypertension as per European Society of Cardiology or European Society of Hypertension. The normal blood pressure as you all know is 120 by 80 millimeter of mercury. High normal that means like pre-hypertension or pre-diabetes we discussed in previous class. No, so pre-hypertension or high normal is if the blood pressure is accounting for 130 to 139 millimeter of mercury of systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure of 85 to 89 millimeter of mercury. So if the patient blood pressure is more than or equal to 140 of millimeter of mercury systolic and more than 90 millimeter of mercury of diastolic, this is definitely hypertension. Since this patient blood pressure was 143 and systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure was 88, she comes under grade 1 hypertension because systolic blood pressure of grade 1 hypertension is 140 to 159 millimeter of mercury and diastole is 90 to 99 millimeter mercury. So she has a grade 1 hypertension or if you want to, if you keep, she is an elderly patient and if you want to label her as isolated systolic hypertension also in this patient because she is having 140 or more than 140 millimeter mercury of blood pressure and diastole is less than 90. So she comes on isolated systolic hypertension also. So what is the, since this patient is having pre-hypertension and dyslipidemia, a, she has a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, always, always you have to calculate the atherosclerotic cardiovascular risk 
with a calculator Framingham heart risk score. So clinical CBD risk score or 10 year associated cardiovascular risk is more than equal to 10%. Targeted or BP goal should be less than 130 by 80. So in this or other comorbidities also like diabetes, CKD or heart failure, in all the conditions you can see the target BP goal is one less than 130 by 80 millimeter mercury. But in case of stroke, secondary stroke prevention, the target BP goal or threshold BP goal is more than equal to 140 by 90. You cannot drop the BP suddenly in such patient because it will cause the stop the brain circulation and the patient might develop more stroke so there will be some supply of oxygen to the brain so we have to keep the blood pressure about 140 by 90 in case of secondary stroke prevention if you classify the hypertension we can classify our types of hypertension primary or secondary hypertension and most common types of hypertension is the primary as you all know that is around accounts 80 to 895 percent and is hereditary and they are in manual factor also but what we miss in OPD is the secondary hypertension. So always if the patient is taking three or more drugs of antihypertensive drugs and the patient blood pressure is not coming under control, then we have to think of patient might be having secondary hypertension. And it accounts around 5 to 20 percent of cases of hypertension may be secondary. So this thing you shouldn't miss in the OPD. So what are the causes of secondary hypertension? The most common causes are the endocrine. So endocrine causes can be hypohypothyroidism. Then you can also have pheochromocytoma. You can also have chronic kidney disease. And so these are some of the common causes of secondary hypertension. If you list the causes of hypertension, they are long list. So you start from renal to renovascular to adrenal. You all aware of and obstetric sleep apnea is also one of the causes of secondary hypertension. There are drugs that can also cause secondary hypertension like estrogen, adrenal steroids, nasal decongestant, erythropoietin you are using commonly in patients with chronic kidney diseases who are undergoing hemodialysis. Okay, so these are the secondary causes of hypertension. So guys, before labeling anyone with the hypertension, what is most important? You should know or you should be Measure, measuring the blood pressure correctly. So what are the key steps of BP measurement? These are the following key steps. First, make the patient cool. Take the, tell the patient to sit for 5 minutes and in the quiet area, seated in the chair. Back will form support and fit, flat feet on the ground. Arm supported with appropriate cough size and it should be heart level. Then check BP 3 times in 1 minute apart. Eliminate the first reading and average the next 2 readings. So this is not possible in the Ross OPD, okay? So what we are doing in the Ross OPD, this is wrong. The BP we are measuring is wrong. That's why it should be measured in another room with the supporting staff like nursing staff or our junior colleagues. So BP should be measured outside, not when we are in the OPD in the Ross, okay? And provide the BP ready to the patient. They should, they have a right to know that. And the most important is that you should measure, use the appropriate cough for appropriate size like small adult 20 to 26 centimeter of arm circumference adult 27 to 34 and if you are large adult ob is 35 to 44 okay and the bladder of the cough length must encircle at least 80 percent of upper arm circumference okay this is very important so what are the types of blood pressure measurement you can do what are the instrument you can use for measuring the blood pressure so there are instruments like aneroid, they are digital, they are mercury. Mercury is banned because it has a mercury there and it has a biomedical hazard, so it has been banned. You do, should not use that. You can use aneroid or digital BB instrument. So what is, how do you measure the unattended office blood pressure measurement? That is, means home blood pressure measurement. So you can use in home digital blood pressure BB instruments. And it's, it should reduce the white coat effect and it should eliminate that. What is white coat hypertension? Marks hypertension. We will be discussing in subsequent slides. Actually, what happens is always there is a systolic blood pressure in office, maybe 5 to 15 millimeter higher than the systolic blood pressure measured in the unattended office BP measurement. 
mean that means opd measurement of this B systolic blood pressure measurement is always 5 to 15 minute higher than the home blood pressure measurement by digital limited evidence and prognostic value of unattended office vision measurement is there we bought so home bp bp monitoring it can be done with the digital bp instrument and it should be done for at least 3 days every morning and evening two measurements should be taken at each measurement session performing one to two minutes apart so the patient can be cool calm in the home and they can do the blood blood pressure measurement properly than in the opd another important if the patient have no times busy businessman a busy persons you can tell them to measure the ambulatory blood pressure measurement that means they can carry that bp instrument along with them the ambulatory they can move anywhere go anywhere else for 20 for 24 hours we can keep that bp instrument and it will record the bp every 15 to 30 minutes and we measure usually what we measure in this ambulatory bp measurement is day time night time or 24 hour blood pressure measurement which we cannot do with the android or digital in our patient or home bp measurement so what is the threshold or what how to define the hypertension in such ambulatory blood pressure measurement readings so the, if the if the blood pressure is more than equal to 130 by 80 mm of mercury in 24 hours and daytime average is more than equal to 135 by 85 mm of mercury and nine time average is more than equal to 120 by 70 then you can label someone as a hypertension so whenever the patient comes to opd in the day time and you found that bp is 120 by 80 and if you 24 hour bp measurement at the night time is more than equal to 120 by 80 then he is label as hypertension so this is the importance of 24 hour bp measurement okay whenever there is discrepancy or there is a doubt in whether the that patient is having hypertension or not we have to order for the ambulatory blood pressure measurement so what white coat hypertension or max hypertension what is white coat hypertension or max hypertension so white coat hypertension is defined as if the name implies white so doctor is wearing the white coat so whenever the bp is high in the opd but in the home it is normal that is known as white coat hypertension max hypertension means the bp is normal <coughs> in the opd but high in the home blood pressure measurement or ambulatory blood pressure measurement okay So now, how to screen and diagnose the case of hypertension? Uh, go ahead with the hypertension. So whenever there is optimal blood pressure less than 120 by 80 in the OPD, then we can tell everyone to measure BP every five years. Whenever there is a normal BP, then you can tell them to measure BP ever every three years. When the patient has high normal BP and you are considering max hypertension, you have to measure the blood pressure every year. And if uh, someone is labeled as a hypertension, then you have to measure the blood pressure daily till the blood pressure pressure is not controlled. Then after that, you can tell the patient, call the patient accordingly, monthly or weekly basis, and you can measure the blood pressure accordingly. But so most important part in the stepwise approach of hypertension is always, always in any disease is always take proper history, do proper examination, and. make a differential diagnosis and go ahead with the lab test and make a final diagnosis so in the history you all know you have to ask so how long the patient is having hypertension what were the drugs he was taking whether is the familial or not to differentiate between primary and secondary whether there is a dietary habit is poor or not like taking a lot of salt diet or high fat diet psychological history all these things the physical examination also we have to check for the bmi we have to check the blood pressure in the both the arms we have to do the fundus examination and the examination related to to rule out the target organ damage of the hypertension likewise to rule out the target organ damage and second in hypertension of the causes of the hypertension you do the lab test so this is the table showing now, now we will be going one by one gradually and with all the one by one, by one. So in clinical examination, what we do is we are doing measuring the BMI, whether the patient has obesity or not, because one of the important cause of second hypertension is obstetric sleep apnea. So patient can high obese patient, or uh, obese patient can have a obstetric sleep apnea. We also have to see the signs of target organ damage, like we have to examine for a fundus, for retinopathy, 
you have to do the neurological examination to draw the stroke you can do the palpation and auscultation heart and carotid arteries because patient can have carotid stenosis patient can have a murmur and patient can have a myocardial infarction we have to palpate the peripheral arteries for rule of peripheral vascular disease comparison between both arms at least once to rule out coarctation of aorta and secondary hypertension causes we can see for a cephalo patches or neurofibromatosis which are the signs of pheochromocytoma associated with main uh, associated with the syndrome with the pheochromocytoma we can palpate and examine for the brew renal brew to rule out renal artery stenosis palpate the kidney to rule out polycystic kidney disease so these are the things and also secondary causes of endocrine causes of hypertension like Cushing syndrome patient can be a moon face bofelholm stray acromegaly can have large hands large nose and like that okay and these are the routine lab tests you have to do you have to do hemoglobin we have to do the fasting blood sugar a1c to rule out diabetes we have to do lipid profile to rule out dyslipidemia sodium potassium to rule out hyperaldosteronism uric acid may may raise creatinine and gfr to rule out ckds likewise we also do ecg to rule out left ventricular hypertrophy urinary albumin creatinine ratio to detect the renal disease fundoscopy for bring out retinopathy and gfr and creatinine for renal disease likewise we have to do echocardiography if you, if you have a patient is having lvh and x-ray showing cardiomegaly then go with the echocardiography to see evaluate the cardiac structure functions carotid ultrasound to rule out carotid artery stenosis because if there is stenosis patient may have or can develop stroke or cva and abdominal ultrasound especially the renal doppler to rule out renal artery stenosis and to rule out the pheochromocyte or adrenal adenoma we can also do cognitive function test and brain imaging okay to rule out the other target organ damage associated with the hypertension now coming to the what are the lab tests you do to rule out the secondary hypertension especially the endocrine causes so for primary aldosteronism when we when the patient without diuretics of hypertension patient without diuretics comes to operate with the recurrent hypoglycemia uh, recurrent hypokalemia potassium is always low then you have to suspect patient might be having primary aldosteronism so you have to say send the plasma aldosterone or prr ratio plasma renin activity ratio and if it is more than 30 to 1 you have to suspect the patient might be having primary aldosteronism for cushing syndrome what you have to do is you have to see that as i already told whether the patient is obese moon face buffalo lamb is or is there is the stri is present in the abdomen then we have to send the patient for overnight dexamethasone this suppression test and you can say 24 hour urinary free cortisol okay if for screening if one of these tests is positive then you have to go with the confirmatory test for cushing syndrome likewise a pheochromocytoma what happens the the patient is usually young they have a recurrent hypertension they have a headache sweating these are the symptoms and palpitation so any patient young patient with a hypertension present with a palpitation sweating and opd with anxious we have to suspect pheochromocytoma if that is ruled out then it is a panic attack okay so what you do to rule out pheochromocytoma is you do 24 hour urine metanephrine excretion and uh, one of the important cause is renovascular so in the renovascular causes for hypertension if the patient have refractory hypertension recent loss of hypertension control recent onset of moderate hypertension with the systolic or diastolic brew then you have to think of mason might be having renal artery stenosis so we have to do the renal ultrasound another important missed diagnosis in causes of hypertension coarctation aorta so always a patient with hypertension opd we have to do detailed examination we have to measure the pulse in both the arms do bp in the both the arms so if the diminished femoral pulses systolic murmur in the posterior left interscapular area you have to suspect coarctation of aorta and do a simple investigation what chest x ray so you can be see the notching of the ribs in the chest x ray and confirmation can be done by trans issue physical echocardiography primary kidney disease is all known we have already discussed so after knowing the classification types and what are the causes of secondary hypertension and how to go ahead with that one of the important entities resistant hypertension 
So when you are giving a three drugs, it can be ARV, calcium channel blockers, or and diuretics. One agent should be always diuretics. With one diuretic, you are giving two other drugs, and the patient target BP is not maintained. Then you have to label the patient as a resistant hypertension. What is refractory hypertension? Patient with resistant hypertension, whose BP cannot be controlled with maximum medical therapy, that is refractory. Five or more drugs are given, including clothiodine and mineral receptor antagonists, to diagnose refractory hypertension. 